the difference that I, I bring is leaving leaders with a stronger footprint of, of themselves. They can look at themselves in the eye and say, I know what I'm about, I know what I believe in, I know what I have to offer, and therefore I can reach out to my organisation more powerfully and more helpfully whilst keeping myself intact. It is all about the whole person, it's not just about the expertise. I, that, and that's, in a way, that's the exciting part. What is it about you? What's the essence of you beyond that technical expertise that helps you be a really powerful and potent leader? And that's where absolutely the whole person is the topic of the conversation. And it's funny, I was talking to somebody recently um, who was about to present a very, very major piece of work. Technically, it was brilliant. Um, they had all the experience to show and they had all the credibility they needed. The one magic ingredient that was missing was who that person was, who their story was. What were they going to tell about themselves that engaged people and reminded the audience, which was both in this country and in other countries, that this person first and foremost was a human being and they had a story to tell. A leader can become more aware of their own voice, what they have to say and their belief in what they have to say as well. Somebody said to me recently, I'm beginning to realise that some of the daft laddie questions that I ask aren't actually as daft as I think they might be. I'm actually beginning to realise that they have a value. And that seems to be counterintuitive when I've spent the last 25, 30 years training as a technical expert and a specialist Yet my value add is actually asking a really daft question or making an observation that I think is obvious to other people in the room. Clearly not. Leaders are trained to be certain. Um, Organisations expect certainty from leaders. I challenge that. I, I, I kind of run almost a counterpoint to that. It's almost like saying, are you, let's just really, let's just really think about that. I will sometimes physically ask somebody to, to stand up and say, I want you to think about what you've just said or that assertion you're making from, from over here. I want you to imagine you're sitting in that audience now and you're watching the leader run this town hall or run this big engagement session. What are you hearing? The personal satisfaction happens on a number of different levels. Number one is to hear somebody saying, oh, I didn't realize I had something different to do now. I know where I'm going. Um, I've got a plan. I didn't, I didn't believe coming into this conversation I could come out with such a clear plan. But actually, more importantly, I feel so much more confident about what I'm going to do now. I remember very recently somebody saying, I can't sit down with them. That's just the conversation I can't have with them. So we very gently unpicked it we rehearsed it, they went off with a different approach to what that really incredibly difficult conversation could be, how it could be approached, came back looking like a cat amongst the cream saying, yeah, we had, it was great, I, I realised I had all these assumptions, I was so anxious about it, but, you know, they really sat down and listened and we weren't defending each other and, you know, we, it was good. Where people feel trusted, where people feel valued at work and respected and rewarded beyond what they get in their pay packet, my goodness me, that's the source from which people begin to take really courageous and very morally responsible decisions. I don't mean to sound pompous, I actually believe it is the water of life.